Greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I welcome to yet another video of ITS's Word of Light. It is my great joy and privilege to stand before you to bring from the Word of God. I would like to turn our attention to the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 13 verses 3 to 9. I would like to read for all of us. And he told them many things in parables saying a sower went out to sow and as he sowed some seeds fell along the path and the birds came and devoured them other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil and immediately they sprang up since they had no depth of soil but when the sun rose they were scorched and since they had no root they withered away other seeds fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked them other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain some a hundredfold some 60 some 30 he who has ears let him hear this is the word of god shall we all look to lord in prayer Gracious God our merciful parent we thank you for this time you have given to us we thank you for all our viewers who have taken time to watch this video lord you bless and anoint each one each and every one of them lord as we are going to listen from your word may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to thy sight o lord our rock and our redeemer amen today for our short meditation The scripture portion like I said has been taken from Matthew chapter 13 verse 3 to 9. This is famously known as the parable of the sower. The parable of the sower. So when you listen to this word parable you might get the doubt okay what is this parable? like why was jesus using parables if you see the gospels the four gospels especially the synoptic gospels that are the first three matthew mark luke you will be knowing jesus has been using lots of parables to speak to the people if you go to the sermon on the mount there also he has been speaking some parables like wherever he is going through the wherever the people are following him he stops and when the gathering is around him he used to talk in parables and then we used to wonder some of us wonder what is this parable it looks like a big word it looks like it has some highly philosophical meaning as such but i would like to tell you the parable is a greek word taken taken from a greek word called parabole parabole uh it has lots of greek meanings several big big words are there but for our simple understanding I would like to tell you that the meaning of the parable is story. It's just a story, simple story. Every day we our mothers used to tell us stories, our parents, our grandparents, they tell us a lots of stories. In the same way Jesus also have been telling these stories to the people who have been following him. But the small difference between a parable and a story is for a parable you have a meaning. Stories are just for entertainment just for fun you don't have to have any hidden meaning for it but a parable has a hidden meaning if you find any parable you have to take time to sit and read so that you'll understand the hidden meaning and then what was the hidden meaning of Jesus Christ when he was speaking in parables so i would like to draw our attention to mark chapter 4 verse 11 and 12 the gospel according to mark chapter 4 verse 11 and 12 i would like to read for all of us and he said to them to you has been given the secret of kingdom of god but for those outside everything is in parables so that they may indeed see but not perceive and may indeed hear but not understand lest they should turn and be forgiven so the meaning or the hidden agenda or hidden message of any parable in the gospels of jesus christ about jesus christ is about the kingdom of god he has been sharing or he has been spilling out the secrets of kingdom of god through parables whoever listens to the stories are 
if they are listening just for entertainment sake or if they are listening just for the sake of hearing it is just a story any any normal story like if you see the present parable you see a farmer just throwing the seeds he is not even sowing he is just throwing the seeds and some fell on the ground some fell on the stone some fell under the throw under the thorns and some fell on the road so this is just a normal story if you go out in any village and if you see in the paddy fields agriculture fields you are going to see this kind of scene so jesus he is using the day to day life situations or livelihoods of people in the form of parables so if you are listening to this story without studying it it's just a normal story about a farmer in the same way there are normal stories about a man losing the coins or about a son going away from the home and returning back so all these are just normal stories that are used by jesus christ but if you sit and take time to study it and understand the message it is giving the message about the kingdom of god so the meaning or the message of the parables throughout the ministry of jesus christ is splitting secrets or conveying hidden messages about the kingdom of god let us all come to the present uh, passage that has been brought to us matthew chapter 13 verses 3 to 9 here like i already said there is a farmer he has some seed so it is a sowing season like you he has prepared the field and then he is trying to sow the seeds so you know in a in a paddy field or in any other field a farmer does not go and put one one seed like this what he does he just throws the seeds so that it will go on fall in different different places and after they but after the small small plants come out of those seeds he will take them and he will arrange it in an order so it was the beginning process of sowing the seeds so he was throwing the seeds and then uh, if you see some fell on the road side some fell on the rocks some fell on the thorns and some others fell in good soil so i would like to bring out what are the necessary elements i mean what are what is the message what is it conveying for us the first one fell on the road side you know the first fell on the road side and then there is no safety for the seed it fell on the road side but as soon as the birds or you know usually if you leave any food particle on the road or outside your home some crow or some bird will come and just take it away because they they like especially they eat uh, lots of seeds so some fe- some seeds fell on the road side and the birds went and k- came k- came and took it away so what jesus christ was meaning is he was referring these seeds as the word of god greetings to you all in the matchless name of our lord and savior jesus christ i welcome to yet another video of ids's word of light it is my great joy and privilege to stand before you to bring from the word of god i would like to turn our attention to the gospel according to matthew chapter 13 verses 3 to 9 so the same way when the seeds are sown or thrown on the road road side just like the birds came and took it away and snatched them from the road the jesus christ is also saying that if your heart is like a road side like if you are not accepting it properly if you are keeping it away keeping it aside the spiritual food the gospel the king the word of god if you are keeping it away there is always a danger of some birds here if you are referring to the birds as evil you can refer to the birds as evil spirits or let's just say certain so the certain is always ready to snatch away the spiritual food that has been offered for your hearts for the believers hearts so even as we might be listening to the word of god uh, at several places we go to churches we receive videos we receive pictures of the word of god but still some of us do not take even a little bit of our time to sit and think or study or read about the word of god we just keep it aside for some other day some other time thinking that okay when we have time we'll go to it and then we'll take it and we'll read it but the certain will not keep it there if you have kept it aside you you i can assure you it is not going to be there for long 
because it is in the road side there is always a danger of being snatched away like satan does not take the word of god satan knows better word of god than you and me because he was an angel he was in the kingdom of god he was worshiping god he was praising god he was the archetype angel he had every information he had every knowledge about god and about the kingdom of god but still he chose not to follow them still he chose to fall away from the kingdom of god from the word of god so you might be thinking if the satan is snatching it away maybe it might be taking it no it's not like any other but it is just going to waste it so if you are keeping word of god aside if you are not letting it inside your hearts the satan is going to snatch it away do not be like the soil of the road side where it is of no use for your hearts for your life for your spiritual fruitfulness the second uh, type of soil that uh, the gospel mentions here is the rocky type the rocky type there are rocks everywhere under the soil there so there is a minimum layer of soil above the rocks but then under the soil there is rocks So as soon as the seeds fell on that rocky type of soil immediately they started growing because there is a layer of soil immediately it started budding up immediately the leaves came up and then it started growing up but then as soon as the the roots touch the rock it is not going any deeper it is not going it is not uh being fruitful anymore as soon as the sun comes as soon as there is a as soon as there is a, some uh, differences or difficulties the plant stops growing and it will start decaying it will start drying up and eventually the plant dies even many of us have the hearts of rocky ground rocky soil like whenever the a word of god is kept in our hearts is sown in our hearts we go and we go to churches we listen from some other people we read bible we pray but then we do not take it deeper we read the bible for the sake of reading it we pray for the sake of doing like our parents or our church ask us to do our pastors ask us to do so that is why for the sake of others we start praying or we start fasting or we start kneeling down we do some things for the sake of others but then there is no depth in our hearts there is no proper soil in our hearts our hearts are being converted as rocks they are not fruitful for the word of god that is sown in our hearts so as soon as the word of god touches the rocky part of our heart it starts drying off it starts decaying and the word of god the blessings that you are about to reach the grace that you are acquiring from the from the god they also start decaying they also got dry off so some of us we have a rocky heart and even though we in the beginning we try to we try to plant we try to be fruitful slowly we the the word of god decays the word of god dries off and the third uh, type of soil that is mentioned in the gospel is the the thorn the the thorny ground so as soon as the seeds fell in the so- soil there is good land there is good soil the plants started rising up the plants started uh, budding up the leaves are coming even now the branches are also started coming there are flowers coming but as soon as it grows up there are thorns around it you know the thorns have uh, small pointy things where if you are going to touch it they'll poke you they'll pain they'll punish you it's a kind of a painful thing so as soon as the thorns cover the plant the plant starts growing it stops growing the plant stops growing and then it will slowly start drying off it will never grow there it will stop there it it may be a huge plant it may be a huge tree you might have uh, you might have planted a mango tree you might have a, planted a banyan tree but as long as it is under the thorns it is never going to grow up to its full potential it is never going to be fruitful never going to be uh, blossoming the flowers it will always stay there it will always stay and remain there under the thorns under the covering of the thorny plants in the same way 
we also our hearts are also uh, when the church or when the pastors when the society somehow from somewhere when we hear the word of god we start budding we start blooming and as soon as we start growing high and then we start uh, being fruitful we start being good we le- we read the word of god for our own personal spiritual growth we pray that because we have certain petitions we pray to praise god we pray to thank god we always do this stuff but as soon as the world hits us with certain difficulties as soon as we face certain struggles as soon as we face certain hardships and problems and as soon as we fail we face huge walls that stop us from growing up we give up we give up the word of god we give up to be blooming we give up being fruitful and as soon as whenever we face difficulties we look to god and say like lord why are you doing this to me Lord why do I have these problems Lord why is it too painful Lord why is it so hard to come up and then you'll be like Lord until and unless you solve these problems of mine I will not grow until and unless you stop these fro- problems in my life I will not read your bible until and unless you give me what I want I am not going to pray so you keep conditions to God you you make limitations to the unlimited god you make conditions to the unconditional love of god so when the thorns of the world or when the struggles and difficulties of the world start oppressing you you start oppressing god you start limiting god you start conditioning god and then you stop being fruitful you stop being blooming you stop the growth of the word of god in your life in your spirituality in your family and then eventually you will stop coming to the word of god to the presence of god that is how the struggles of the world are going to suppress us and then the last soil that is mentioned in the gospel is the good soil the good soil everything is good it is not situated on the road side it is not situated on the rocky ground it is not situated under the thorns it is very good it is properly prepared properly tilled by the farmer the soil is very very good and the seeds are sown in it it normally started blooming without any difficulties without any scaredness or without any frightenedness of someone snatching away the grains and without any fear of no deeper roots and without any fear of suppressing situations around around the crop so it starts blooming it starts growing and it's being fruitful and then if you see if you see the verse eighth verse other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain some a hundred fold some 60 some 30 he who has ears let them hear so this is the word of uh, the word that is sown in good hearts so i would like to concentrate on this uh, good soil a bit and then we will finish quickly so the good soil is prepared properly and then good the seeds are sown and it started blooming everything is fine even now whoever are watching this video whoever are sharing this video and whoever are sitting in the churches whoever are praying kneeling down and fasting and all we are all good soil our hearts is good soil and then we started blooming but if you carefully observe the verse if you carefully read and not just reading if you sit properly and study the verse the the soil the it is producing grains one a hundred fold some 60 fold and some 30 fold if we are all good soil if we are all good christians if we are all reading the bible the same bible if we are all praying to god if you are all going to churches all the time if you are always in the presence of god if you are always watch if you are following this channel if you are listening to the word of god word of light if you are doing everything perfectly why the bible says some are blooming or some are being fruitful only 30% and why are some only 60% and only some are giving or some are producing 100 fold what is happening in the 30% and the 60% 30 fold and the 60 fold there are some of us who are festival christians when there is christmas you buy good clothes you do all the cookings you do all the sweets in your home in your home only those week na the advent season you are very pious 
you are very spiritual and then you go to carols you go to church you attend services and then you pray to god you sing christmas songs you buy gifts you buy chocolates you buy sweets and distribute to others if some beggars or someone asking for help comes to your home you will give them nicely you are very good you are very pious you are very spiritual but only during the season of christmas and when easter comes when the lent season comes you will do fasting you will be kneeling down you will be crying lord god you have sent your only son for us he is dying on the cross he is bleeding on the cross for our sake for the sins for the sake of our sins he is dying and then you will be crying you will be shedding all your tears you will be reading the bible you will be fasting you will do everything but only in the lent between the lent and the christmas you never see the church you are sleeping in your rooms you are sleeping in your homes and then you now we have phone pay is google pay and all so you will directly send or forward the money through the phone pay or google pay to your pastor and you will be writing a message pastor this is my tithe for this month you please pray for us you are making or not just you we are making as a christians the people who are producing only 34 blessings 34 grain 34 grains we are just festival christians when there is no festival when there is nothing in your life happening when your life is normal when your life is going as it is uh, every day it is going you are not going to the churches you are making church as a offering machine where you can just send offering and receive the blessing blessings from their prayers you don't even know whether the pastor is praying for you but you are just asking for their prayers but on the christmas and then easter and all you will be running to the churches sitting in the first benches and then praising god saying hallelujah praise the lord to the pastors and you will be why wearing white and white burning all the candles and you will be very good very spiritual but only festival christians we are producing only 30% or 30 fold grains in our lives only 30 fold fruitfulness in our lives we are all good soil we are all producing fruits but only 30% and then there are 60% christians they do everything the same way they are also praying to god they are also listening to the word of god they are also uh, re- reading the scripture portion they come to churches every day they are not festival christians they come every day every week they come whenever there are programs they used to come whenever there is help or necessary in the church they used to offer their helps everything they do but inside their hearts they are exhibitionists they just want to show that they are good christians they'll be like if someone is if they are giving offering they will make sure that that amount of offering is announced in the churches in several churches you will be seeing uh, the so and so family the family of uh, so and so have contributed 10000 from his tithe or from her tithe from her first offering they have offered 5000 what is the necessary of announcing the money that you are giving if you see in the scripture portion when that old lady has given only two coins the god has said it is the biggest amount of money that the offering is receiving this time So Jesus Christ is seeing Jesus Christ is accepting and acknowledging only the least amount of money given through the whole heart and there are these exhibitionists the 60% who 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 only do things who only pray who only read the scripture for the sake of others watching them are how many of us are doing things for god how many of us are praying how many of us reading the scripture portion just for your personal spiritual growth if you are doing for the sake of to, for the sake of others knowing it if you are doing so that others will uh, praise you for what you are doing you are only being fruitful of 60 fold and then there are 100% who do things for the sake of spirituality who do things for the sake of being fruitful in the presence of god there who are doing things where no others are seeing when no one is expecting they do things so that they are doing for the sake of god for the sake of his ministry so today from this word shall we all introspect ourselves and listen to the word of god and study it and realize how many 
how much are we being fruitful are we being fruitful only 30% or are we being fruitful only 60 fold are we or are we completely being 100% fruitful shall we all look to lords in prayer let's pray gracious god our heavenly father we thank you for this word we thank you for helping us to realize what kind of christians are we lord help us to not be fruitful only 30 fold or 60 fold lord we might be christians but we might be doing it for the sake of others or we might be doing for the sake of just doing it lord please help us to realize where we are and help us to be fruitful 100 fold and help us to come closer to you for we ask this in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen thank you and may god bless you all